Have you ever looked at a pack of beans and seen a name like F1 or IBL or BX1 Fast Film and thought, what does all of that shit mean? Yeah. I feel ya. But these breeding terms show up in all kinds of strain listings and strain descriptions, but still most people only halfway understand it. So today we're going to be breaking down all of this confusing breeding language so you can read these labels like a real breeder. And these are just simple definitions and explainers that do not violate YouTube's terms of service and I'm not encouraging anyone to do anything illegal. So I've worked in this industry for years and helped thousands of people learn how to grow at home. But breeding was something I never really dove into. But now that I'm learning more about the history behind the strains we all know, I want to understand breeding better too. So like always, we're going to learn about all of this stuff together. But before we get too deep into the breeding videos, I think the perfect place to start is just understanding all of these breeding terms. Because there's a lot and they can get confusing. And we're going to start with land races, heirlooms, and bushweed. Land races are the original cannabis varieties that evolved naturally in different parts of the world. The pure ancestors everything else came from. They adapted over generations to their local conditions like the heat or altitude or rainfall, so each one ended up with its own flavor, smell, and style of growth. Then there are heirlooms. Those are old school strains that growers preserved outside of their native region. So if a land race plant from one country was taken somewhere else decades ago and kept alive by a grower, that becomes an heirloom. And you might also hear people talk about bushweed. That one gets confused with land races a lot because both sound like wild plants. Bushweed usually just means feral or neglected plants that have escaped cultivation or grew without any real selection. They might be low potency or a random mix of different genetics that just happen to be growing wild. So land races are like the foundation of breeding where where bushweed is just like the overgrown cousin that sort of wandered off and got lost. You, you, we all have that cousin. Also at the top of this list before we get very deep are parent strains, crosses, and hybrids. So every strain starts with two parents, a male and a female, and their offspring is called a cross or a hybrid. So if I were to breed together or cross a fake strain called something like citrus burst, something that smells like orange peels, with another strain called frosty giant that's huge and covered in resin, their offspring might smell citrusy, look frosty, and grow somewhere in between. That's a hybrid, a mix of both parents' genetics. And when you start looking at beans, you'll see a bunch of different categories. Regulars, films, autos, photos, fast versions. And you might sometimes hear people talk about slang or shorthand of all of this, like film photos, reg autos, or fast films. And those are all just shorthand that combine two things, the plant's sex type and how it flowers. Regular seeds are the original type, about half turn out male and half turn out female. Breeders need both sexes, so regulars are used to make new crops. Feminized seeds are bred to grow only females, usually by making a female plant produce pollen and pollinate herself. And that's great for growers who are looking for a harvest, but not ideal for someone looking to breed. Autoflowers are a really fun one. I just had a conversation with the joint doctor about autoflowers that sort of got me thinking about this whole video. And these plants have very special DNA. Autoflowers have a bit of ruderalis DNA mixed in. And this ruderalis DNA means they flower automatically with age instead of being dependent on a light cycle. And photoperiod plants are sort of the opposite. Photoperiod plants are the traditional kind. They need that change in light schedule to start flowering. And then you have fast or early versions, which are about half autoflower and half photoperiod. They still need that light cycle change, but they finish flowering faster. Now let's get vigorous because next Next, we have hybrid vigor, aka heterosis. So when two totally different parents are crossed, the first generation, the F1, often grows faster, stronger, and more productive than either parent. That's called hybrid vigor. If our citrus burst and frosty giant seed explode with thick stems and huge yields, that's heterosis at work. And I know I just mentioned F1s without explaining what F1s are, and we're gonna get there in just a second, but first, First, we have polyhybrids. So most modern strains are polyhybrids, which are just crosses made from other hybrids. It's like a genetic vegetable soup. You might get one plant that's really tall and lime green and get another plant that's really short and dark purple, even from the same pack. 
And that's because each bean in that pack has a different mix of grandparents or great-grandparents. Like they all have the same grandparents and great-grandparents, but the ratio of that mix can be different between each bean. And this means sometimes you can find something amazing, sometimes you can find something weird, and that's half the fun of breeding. Now we have genotype and phenotype. And this is simple, but it can still trip some people up. So the genotype is the plant's complete genetic recipe. The full DNA it inherits from both parents. But the phenotype is just how that genetic recipe actually shows up in real life. So let's go back to that example we made up. If we germinated 10 seeds from the citrus burst crossed with the frosty giant, they all share the same genotype. But one might be short with lemon smelling buds and another might be tall with heavy resin. And that's the phenotype, the visible expression of those genes. So the genotype is like the full set of instructions and the phenotype is just how those instructions play out giving their specific environment and light and and nutrients. And just a quick note, if you ever want to dive deeper into any of this stuff and see how breeders actually list their genetics, Seedsman has one of the best reference catalogs I've found from all kinds of different breeders. It's full of detailed strain lineages, lots of helpful articles, breeding info, and descriptions that make this kind of stuff way easier to understand. I use their website all the time, and if you check it out, don't forget you can save 10% with this strain show. This is a great educational resource to explore real breeding examples and terminology. Now, the part I promised, F1s, F2s, F3s, and beyond. Those F numbers you see on bean packs just mean how many generations deep that line is. The first cross between two parents is the F1. That's where you see the strongest hybrid vigor and usually the most uniform results. Breeding F1s together gives you F2s. At that point, the genes start mixing in new ways. You'll see more variation and sometimes discover hidden traits that neither parents clearly showed. And that's why breeders will make those F2s to go hunting for those new special expressions. Further expressions like F3, F4, or F5 are where the breeders start stabilizing what they found. They pick the plants that best represent what they want, maybe the perfect balance of citrus and frost, and they keep breeding those similar plants together. And by the time they reach the F4 or F5, most of the unwanted variations have been bred out. Then the plants will start breeding true, meaning that the offspring consistently show the same look, smell, and structure as their parents. People are talking about a genetic being stable or the traits being locked in. They're usually just talking about generations of careful selection where they keep what they want, get rid of what they don't want, and this narrows down the gene pool until the strain performs predictably. Now we already got vigorous, what if we get inbred? <laughs> no, not like that, not like that. I mean IBLs or inbred lines. An IBL, or inbred line, is what happens after several rounds of that stabilizing process. So the breeder just keeps selecting those plants that look, smell, and grow the same. Then they breed them together again and again until nearly every seed produces plants that are almost identical. And that's how you can turn something unpredictable into something very consistent. The variety in your seeds goes down, but that's the whole point of this. The genetics get tighter, but the strain becomes more dependable. It's the difference between like a random mix of traits and a true repeatable known mix of traits that you're gonna get every time. It brings us to back cross or BX. A back cross, often abbreviated as just BX, is a shortcut to fix or reinforce one parent's traits. So back to our fake strain. Imagine if we had one citrus burst crossed with the frosty giant that smelled exactly like mandarin oranges. And that was my favorite. That's the profile I wanted to go for. That's the smell and the look. That one's perfect to me. If I then take that child and breed it back to the citrus burst, which is the parent that gave it the orange smell in the first place, that's a back cross, a BX1. Do it again, and it's a BX2, then a BX3, and so on. And each time, I'm increasing how much of that orange smelling parent's genetics show up in the line. But if you overdo it, you can lose vigor and start showing weaknesses, so there is a balance or like a limit, you know? Next, we have S1 and self to see. So sometimes breeders skip the male entirely. If they love one female plant so much that they want her exact genetics in seed form, they can reverse her to produce pollen and pollinate herself. 
The seeds from that process are called S1s, short for selfed one. They're all female and nearly identical to the original plant. Basically, that plant reproduced through seed. And although it may be similar, an S1 isn't the same as a clone. A clone is a literal cutting from the original. It's the exact same genetic material, so no differences at all. An S1 carries almost all of the same genetics, but because the plant makes new seeds, each one can still show slight variations. But in a lot of cases, that's exactly why breeders make S1s. To preserve or share a special plant in seed form, or to explore subtle variations of a favorite without needing the original clone. But breeding plants isn't always about experience. Sometimes curiosity alone can change everything. And one great example of that is this story of the White Widow. This video shows how one very curious breeder changed these genetics forever and made history in the process. This is sick. I'll see you there. Peace.